The last speaker of the session is uh, Mathieu uh, Sivillat from Observatory de Paris. He will present about fair high level data for Sharing Cove astronomy. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, the, thing, the, the slides I will present received a large input from uh, the ESCAPE uh, project partners. And uh, I'm also part of uh, CTA, which uh, gives some inputs to ESCAPE as well as a very serious use case. And uh, Catherine and Matthias are co coordinating this participation to ESCAPE. I also received many input from the IVOA, the Virtual Observatory Alliance, and uh, my local uh, data center in Paris. So to explain a bit the, the ESCAPE project, I just give the acronyms here. Uh, it's, it's Science Cluster for Astronomy and Particle Physics Facilities uh, in Europe. So the research infrastructures. See that there are several packages in uh, in ESCAPE. The virtual observa observatory part, how to put data in a data lake, how to plug this with software and services, and uh, combine all this in a science analysis platform. And this is really in the idea of a new European open science cloud. So now the context of data generation, particularly for large observatories such as CTA, is that you have a large consortium building a very massive instrument. Uh, data acquisition is made with high rate of data, large data that is put in different data centers that can be uh, in several locations. Then you have a system for archiving and dissemination. And finally, the end user gets this data. But then to do the, the work and really have some results, um, there is more than the user needs than the data. The data product generation is too obscure to the end user. So when we are talking about the sharing of data in particular, I give you here the cycle of this data, different data levels from the raw images, calibrated, then reconstruction of events. And what we are talking about here our gamma-like event, so this data level three, is a list of tera electron volt, very high energy gamma rays, candidate photons, for which you, we, we get the coordinate, the time, and the energy. It's very low con statistic. We don't have that many photons, and it's a high background. Then this is publicly available, and uh, well, this can be reduced and adjusted for, for science purposes. Here are the final results that you may want in a publication. So how to make all this data fair? Um, I give a link here to the talk on Monday and to go fair. Those four topics of the fair principle um, well, received some uh, solutions from our part to match with the chunk of data. And first, to be really findable, we uh, use the virtual observatory standards as expected because it's tailored to make data findable. We have a set of public uh, data from the HES experiment, so a chunk of telescope in Namibia, for which we developed uh, an VO virtual observatory OPSTAP service. So OPS is for the use of the observation data model core components that has been adapted to chunk of data. And TAP is for the stable access protocol, also developed by IVOA. And this service is registered to the VO registry, which makes it fully findable by uh, several tools, even if you don't know that the data exists. So here I have exa examples of TAP handle, where you put HES and you have a proposed result, which is our service. Here I downloaded uh, uh, the background image in uh, Terra electron volt data and Fermi data, and overplotted in the green all the data from uh, this public data release. And here we use Topcat to uh, do a query directly on, on the table. So obtaining uh, the data is another issue. Now that we selected and found the data, uh, and we base this access to the access URL field of the Obscore data model. And here I show the direct download of a FITS file. So I have my obscore records and this access URL with a simple click in Aladdin 
will put all the, the gamma ray photons that have been detected during this run. Uh, we are also uh, testing and implementing a, a data link service so that we don't get only the photons, but also the associated calibration data. And um, we are thinking about the service that would collect the data plus the calibration to feed the science analysis tools. There is the question of access rights. And for this, um, we anticipate the need for permission, a proprietary period for, for principal investigators. And uh, there is a, this IAM escape service that we intend to plug with the system. Now to make really the data fully interoperable and more widely than what is uh, allowed by the, the virtual observatory standards, there is a community standard within the Cherenkov astronomy uh, shared with different facilities to define a common data level three data formats for gamma ray astronomy based on FITS. And this is completed uh, with a dedicated Python package for gamma ray astronomy. And all those um, will show the community info to discuss and find global solutions together. So work and discussion are in progress, but there are several formats that are proposed and it's a prototype for CTA. It's already used by HES and by several uh, current instruments that there are already publications based on this uh, data and data model. And Gamma Pi is an open source Python package will be used as a core library for the science tools of CTA, already in use. And I give a link here to the recently uh, um, proposed FAIR principle for research software, not the data, but the software itself. And Gamma Pi is a kind of project that uh, try to match most of the FAIR uh, principles for research software. There is also the Escape OSSR, an open access repository to share scientific data, and Gamma Pi is part of this project within Escape to make the software, as well as the data, as, as we have seen, available to the public and to all the community. Now we have FAI, how to become fair. Uh, as we have seen, uh, first we use the virtual observatory standard. We have to discuss and define community standard, and this is still work in progress. But there are technical solutions to those items. Reusability is a bit more subtle. Uh, it's based on the quality and the reliability, trustworthiness of the products. And this is not just a technical solution that you are given. It's a context, a metadata that explain how to use the data and how the data was prepared. If we ask question, what calibration was applied? Well, you need to find the processing and where the calibration was applied to actually match and check that it's a good calibration. What tools were used and how they were used? What assumptions were made during the data preparation? And in particular, with time, this key information may disappear. You may have written it down somewhere, but well, I, with time, sustainability is not uh, is not met. So one of the key answers to this is uh, the, the the recording of provenance information, and we need for this the origin, the trace, and the detailed manipulation of what happened. This needs to be structured. It's not just on this spot that you want the raw data and the final product. You also want to have a structured path that explains you each step that was taken during the data manipulations. And we need to keep it and link it to the data. This is why we developed recently an IVOA provenance standard data model as a recommendation. And uh, I present here the, the glossary of uh, concepts that we used when talking about provenance. And those concepts are used on the internet proposed by the World Wide Web Consortium, that you have a chain of activities and entities. Entities are used and generated by activities. Activities can communicate or send information to other activities. Entity can be derived. All this vocabulary is the, the basic vocabulary we use when you are talking about the origin, the path of the data, what happened to the data. It's associated to an agent or attributed to an agent if it's an entity. Now, the, the IVOA provenance uh, data model developed 
help to fill this basic structure or graph or the backbone of the provenance with useful information. And I'm thinking about what is the activity that really happened. See here, we have a tree of activities, entity, activity, entity, activity, entity. There is this backbone here. And in orange, there is a description of this activity, really what happened. And you get here uh, some description and some links to understand what happened during this activity. You also have here the configuration parameter that's been sent to this activity to really know how it was performed, what happened during the cause the algorithm and how it was configured. Uh, also, the, the entity is explained by an entity description so that you can access it and uh, distribute it. So when we talk about provenance, uh, there are several concepts that come in mind and that are a bit different. I presented here a graph for the full provenance, really this graph that traces activities and entities up to the raw data. And this information cannot be hosted uh, in an entity itself. It should be stored in a central database or separate files. Um, we are also thinking when we talk about provenance about this key information that we need to use. And for CTA, it would be, well, this event, is it a gamma ray event? Is it something else? What was the telescope configuration? Uh, the sky condition, the, recon the reconstruction method that was used. All this is somewhere in the full provenance, but is also attached to an entity so that it's directly used to process this entity. And we are proposing uh, the, the development of the last step provenance that would be really some keywords embedded into an entity about the last activities. So by then, using this uh, with links to uh, previous entities and last entities, you could reconstruct the full provenance step by step just by having the, this last step provenance stored in entities. I give you links here about the discussion we had uh, at ADAS and uh, within an escape workshop. And I will be talking about this during the IVOA meeting next week. So uh, in a word, what scientists have generally have in mind is that, well, you do some process and then you store some data in the header, some metadata, and it's embedded and people will know about it. But we need a more advanced provenance management and we include capture inside the process really at each action. This is stored in a central database and this can be visualized by standards and protocols and tools developed for this. I give here just a few examples and a link to a more detailed presentation of those. So now all this uh, can lead to uh, the development of a full science portal for fair chain cross data. So making fair data requires discussion, anticipation. This VO compliance is a requirement. It is written as a requirement for CTA, for example, and other um, infrastructure facilities in escape. Um, we need to capture this relevant metadata along the process. So this science portal would uh, offer an advanced search dedicated to chunk of data some data preview and selection, and then an online processing with provenance tracing. This is what we expect associated with user management and space. We have test implementation. I give short links here and the snapshots. And uh, I thank you for your attention. I have to say just one word that uh, we also are looking for a postdoc uh, to work on the, the fair chunk of data in general. And I will be posting this uh, announce uh, on, the, on Discord. Thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, any questions from the audience? OK, I'll, I'll have a quick question. So since you mentioned that uh, the uh, data products are accessible, so I wanted to know if they uh, come with uh, like some diagnostics to see uh, how how the uncertainty is in like in making the products? Yeah, you, maybe you are talking about some flags or warnings that uh, could make the data well more or less uh, precise. 
uh, uh, yeah, so quali quality factors, uh, quality. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. Plan. Uh, th this is of course done, and uh, there is a, a full process. So calibration is a bit complex with Cherenkov data. Uh, you have first a rough calibration that is applied, and several days before you can compute a real full calibration. So you have this flag of what level of calibration was applied, which makes the data different. And um, I'm also thinking that in the provenance data model, uh, we dedicated a, a label quality to some entities. So at some test, test activities, you can generate those uh, quality entities that would help the user uh, determine if the data is sufficiently good quality for, for it. OK, thank you so much. Uh, I don't see any questions on uh, Discord. So let's uh, thank the speaker one more time.